We've been asking the diocese to release its list for years. And in the meantime, we obtained thousands of pages of public records from courthouses across Acadiana. It's not over. We still have dozens of public records requests pending. And while the diocese acknowledged a list of 15, we uncovered a list of at least 36. And in the process, questions about whether promises were kept. With faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and with love of God in my heart, I do accept the pastoral care of the people of God in the Diocese of Lafayette. Bishop Gerald was installed as the sixth bishop in the Diocese of Lafayette in December 2002 as the church sex abuse crisis was unfolding nationwide. Gilbert Gothe molested an awful lot of kids. I, I know he'll do it again. I, I could probably guarantee he'll do it within a month. Already a familiar scandal in Lafayette, the diocese promised reform. The church is moving forward, that we're dealing with it in a forthright manner. But under Gerald's leadership, there are questions if that promise was kept. In uncovering our list, KETC has found at least three cases in Gerald's tenure where the diocese was aware of complaints against living priests. First, the Gerard Smith case. Smith was accused of sexual abuse in Lafayette, Calcasieu, and St. Landry parishes. Records obtained by KETC, including Smith's personnel file with the diocese, show one of his accusers, Roy Touche, complained at least three times. They all lied because they didn't want to deal with the victims. State police only got involved when Touche filed a formal complaint in 2015. Next, a lawsuit against Father Marshall LaRiviere, accusing him of abuse in the 1960s at St. Mary Magdalene Church in Abbeville. The case was settled in 2004. Law enforcement was not notified. On September the 18th, 2018, about three weeks ago, I was informed of an accusation of sexual abuse of a minor by Monsignor Roby Robichaud. Monsignor Roby Robichaud. He was placed on leave in October 2018 after two women came forward accusing him of sexual misconduct when they were teenagers. I wanted to know the truth about what occurred or did not occur. But the initial accuser went to the diocese in both 1994 and 2004. Despite her accusations, Robichaud was allowed to stay in ministry, work in schools, and even promoted within the diocese to the post of judicial vicar. The church's fidelity is to the Lord Jesus himself and his teaching on When Bishop the Gerald learned of the accusation, he consulted with the Holy Office in Rome, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. The initial accuser was 16 when the alleged abuse happened. Canon law would have considered her to be an adult, civil law a minor. Bishop Gerald sided with the church. I am deeply sorry that this has happened to any child of God who has been abused by a priest. Three months after that news conference, the diocese finally reported Robichaud to police, saying it was at the victim's request. While Gerald's handling of the case may have violated church policy, what about state laws? It's very fact specific. Um, when the clergy is made aware of ongoing abuse, if the abuse has already passed, um, the, the way the laws are written is there's really no legal obligation to report that. Ken Levy is a law professor at LSU. Although members of clergy are mandated reporters, he says those state laws are limited to current and ongoing abuse. The, where the tweaking really need, where the legislatures really need to think hard about revising uh, is with the mandatory reporting. The state has to be the one to deal with this. Um, it can't be up to the church. And, Right now, the laws are written in such a way that they still give too much deference to the church. Whether a violation of church policy or state law did or did not occur, there is a woman who reported an allegation of sexual abuse against a priest and nothing was done for 14 years. So many times people will come to me in confession and say, Father, I still feel angry. I, I still feel the hurt. I, I still feel the disappointment in being hurt by so-and-so. KTC spoke with Robichaud's initial accuser. She says, in 1994 and in 2004, both Bishop Flynn and Bishop Gerald were presented with the same information. Uh, we will not be taking questions at this time, but, but we do welcome your questions to be submitted via email, and we'll be glad to get the answers for you. Bishop Desitel, do you agree with Bishop, Bishop Desitel, thank you. Decision? 
as we said, we will not be taking questions, no, and this ends our statement. Thank you for being Logistical, here. A logistical thing. On September 18th, he had said that there weren't any anyone... more questions. That was 14 weeks ago today. The bishop declined to answer any questions at that news conference. Instead, we were asked to email our questions in, which we did. We want to know if Bishop Gerald's handling of the Monsignor Robichaud case was appropriate. Is there any accountability? Does Bishop Gerald have a statement? 14 weeks later, still no response. Our investigation continues. With new questions about openness and transparency in the Diocese of Lafayette, the final part of our investigation, The List, tomorrow at 10 right here on KTC.